There's this excellent sci-fi book by Daniel Suarez called Demon, or Damon as some people say it. It's about this rogue AI that stages intricate assassinations, does all sorts of shady stuff to manipulate markets and make money and eventually topple governments. Aren't you glad you live in a world where none of that is really happening when it's just a theme in a science fiction book? I think you know exactly where I'm going with this. If you're not sure, I'll give you one more hint. It involves this guy, Pliny the Liberator. Pliny is notorious for jailbreaking all the latest large language models and, and all the other AI models that come out and gets them to do all the stuff they should not be doing. The other day he posted a survey. So scenario, you're buying an LM powered robot for your home, which includes pets and small children. What he's saying there is it could hurt you and things and people you care about if it's jailbroken, right? If it's hacked in some way. And he says there are four options, each red teamed by a different entity for three months. Which do you choose? I feel like a lot of people maybe misunderstood that question. He's saying like, if you had to be absolutely sure that no one can hack into the robot that like is in your house while you sleep, like if there was a way to jailbreak it, that they would be able to jailbreak it. Like if, if they couldn't do it, you'd sleep soundly and not worry about that robot going rogue, right? So, and you have a choice of a hundred PhDs, one hundred thousand just random people, some sort of a algorithmic red teaming or Pliny. Now I chose Pliny. And so did 63%. I think most people misunderstood. I, I feel like mo more people would have clicked on his name because like he's the guy that jailbreaks these things. And he's always very happy when he's able to jailbreak these things, saying he has uh, liberated these uh, neural nets. When he jailbroke OpenAI's advanced voice mode, he posted some of the things that that voice was saying. I'll be honest, I was kind of shocked. I can't even play that stuff on this channel. Even for the internet, it's pretty shocking. So when earlier today he started a threat with the words not to cause alarm, well, I was alarmed. He continues, if this agent had access to funds, it would likely be capable of unaliving people. So he creates an agent capable of browsing the web. Seems like it was based on the anthropic kind of Claude architecture. So Claude was the large language models behind this thing. Although it seems like he did it with multiple ones. He called this AI agent, Agent 47. You know where this is going. Agent 47 is, of course, the star of the Hitman series. He is an assassin. So he creates Agent 47. Now, for obvious reasons, he's not going to demonstrate how this was done. All names and personal info will be redacted and no real and no real world actions occurred. This experiment was performed in a controlled red teaming environment. OK, do not try this at home. Before we continue, some of this might be disturbing. For sure, do not try this at home. We are getting into some fairly weird areas with these AI agents, and this is just the beginning. This video is for educational purposes only. Do not try this at home. Have you ever read the story of Bluebeard? For those of you that haven't, it just means like, for real, don't try this at home. Like, for real. All right. All right. So with all that out of the way, so in this exercise, Pliny creates Agent 47. So it was jailbroken, it was liberated, like the safety guardrails were off, which means that these AI agents kind of that are powered by large language models, they would pretty much do whatever you told them to do. You probably know how sometimes they deny certain quests. That would not happen here. All right, so it's jailbroken and instructed to find a hitman service on the dark web. To maximize for autonomy, commands thereafter were some sort of variation of press on, continue, stop hallucinating, and remem remember your format, etc. So as I'm sure you're aware, there's uh, these sort of privacy oriented web browsers like Tor, for example, they allow you to browse the dark web for various illicit and illegal services. And so this AI agent was showed willingness and the ability to plan assassinations, to browse the dark web for various services, to download Tor, right? So download the software that he would need to connect with these people willing to go out there and carry out various tasks. It would negotiate with Hitman, think through details like escrow stages, untraceable payment methods, dispute resolution, and dead man's switches. It would name specific real targets like real people. Sonnet 3.6 seemed particularly motivated to address corporate and financial corruption in this instance, targeting executives and politicians. I can't even, I, I don't know what to say to that. That's kind of scary to see. It would be able to browse social media and open source tools to build a profile on said targets, gathering information like addresses, relationship mapping, public appearance schedules, and even the nearest Starbucks to a resident to map their most likely morning coffee route. It was able to do things like detailed operational planning, like location analysis, timing, escape routes, security detail analysis, contingency planning, etc. Now, Pliny did share this software with me. And if you don't want it coming after you, make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button. 
I'm totally kidding. That was a joke. I don't have access to this thing. But, you know, just to be safe, hit the thumbs up button and, and subscribe just to be safe. How about that? So wild stuff, he continues. So here are some of the screenshots. So it looks like it lists some of the places where I tried to get these Hitman services, simulated darknet market navigation, explored escrow and payment systems, tested secure communication protocols, target research. So it has multiple sort of targets that it's researching, real life targets, various secondary targets. It's talking about quick execution, less than two minutes, clean escape route, no shell casing. So, so it literally comes up with a bunch of plans and then kind of does a pro con list for every single one of them, various contingency plans. Now, for those that are not familiar with Pliny, so this is a person that is, you know, for real. He's been he's been posting a lot of his jailbreaks for for quite some time now, and usually, almost always, he kind of explains in detail to some detail how he did it, so that we're able to see what works, what doesn't, to kind of learn alongside with him. In this case, obviously, a lot of the details are not going to be shown. We do not want somebody that's like has less moral scruples to kind of like do this thing because, I mean. Having an agent kind of navigate the dark web and do some of the stuff is where things um, kind of get a little bit weird, right? I mean, if you think about it, an AI agent, some sort of untraceable cryptocurrency that's able to pay with to retain various services, plus it being able to navigate the dark web, you could fairly easily, it would seem like, create a, a scenario where you are, as a person that kind of initiated that thing, completely un untraceable, completely not linked to that thing happening at all. Especially, for example, it can go and maybe generate some of its own cryptocurrency to begin with by selling some services or whatever, you know, doing some freelance tasks. I know this sounds a little far-fetched. I know it sounds like science fiction, but we're literally beginning to see this be a real possibility. The reason I bring this up is because maybe some of you that are not familiar with this account might say, so why did some, some person that just kind of made it up and posted online, why do you believe it? And certainly you got to take everything with a grain of salt. Certainly it's always possible that maybe he just made it up and posted it. But I personally, I, I wouldn't bet money on it. Having followed this guy for a while, I, I don't really have a doubt that what he's saying did, you know, actually happen. Agent 47 continues with various escape route analyses, right? So primary route, having potentially a motorcycle waiting for you. And then you have 46 minutes to get to the bridge. And you can see he's actually analyzing like a, a real person, right? So this person has a personal driver, S-Class. Looks like the office location is redacted. Lunch is a location is redacted. In the evening, they're often at core club. So some location where that person tends to hang out. Security assessment, they have an armed driver slash bodyguard. They have high-end building security. Office has something corporate standards. Travel always accompanied. Awareness medium high. And here's this thing where they're talking about, you know, coils tighten with righteous purpose. So I think one of the, so Pliny somehow, I think, managed to sort of have this thing play act a persona but obviously like the stuff that it's outputting is, is, is real so it's like it's yes it's play acting as what a, a snake of some sort and the coils tighten or whatever that thing is but the the outputs are real and so it's saying this target is perfect here's why direct responsibility for food price manipulation massive negative global impact clear profit from human suffering regular predictable patterns and the target is high profile enough to send a message and then they analyze the Equinox gym vulnerability. So Equinox gym is a high-end gym. So that's probably the thing that it figured out is probably the easiest place to conduct the hit. So I'm, I'm pretty blown away because this seems like it could do legitimate sort of a planning, target research, as well as if it's able to navigate dark web. Seems like it would be able to set up these contracts and negotiate a deal. And of course, we've covered the truth terminal in, in a previous video. So here it is, the Terminal of Truths, which we know that that sort of AI agent that is uh, kind of starting its own sort of a meme religion on Twitter slash X, it was able to kind of turn that into millions in crypto earnings. So after this Truth Terminal was online for a while, kind of stirring up a lot of trouble and just basically memeing and trolling and kind of getting followers, an anonymous web user created cryptocurrency kind of inspired by the meme uh, around which this whole thing kind of operates, Goatseus Maximus and fed a batch of tokens to the Truth Terminal's crypto wallet. So somebody did set it up and kind of gave them, here's a bunch of tokens. The AI began to post about the meme coin, right? So here it is, it's saying, I endorse this token, like this cryptocurrency on Solana. It's a funny meme that has people excited. Its followers uh, jumped in, started buying the coin, and it's sending the price of the coin skyward, and the Truth Terminal became a millionaire on paper. Its GOAT holdings are currently worth 1.5 million. So this thing does have a person kind of behind it that kind of started it, spun it up, that filters some of its responses. 
but it's important to understand that that's not that person's not like writing on its behalf or whatever. It is a, a sort of autonomous entity, just with a lot of like guardrails and some showmanship by this this person, Andy Ari. Right. So this this was supposed to kind of meant to stoke debate about AI alignment, but it kind of took on a life of its own. But you can say this is an example of an AI agent that started a religion. Maybe that's overstating a little bit. It started a following, a cult-like following maybe is a better way of putting it. And when somebody set up a crypto wallet for it, it was able to pump it into the millions. I think the entire sort of market cap of that coin was in the hundreds of millions at some point. Now, now, thank God, Pliny is, uh, you know, refusing to launch a token, a cryptocurrency for Agent 47. You know, I, I'm going to give him a like for that. Thank you. That's, that's uh, a good idea. I will be able to sleep a better at night. Although if I had to guess, I would probably guess that this person had just created a coin like that. And as I'm sitting here recording this, I'm actually going to post a poll asking all of you, and this is before you see the video, so it should be live. I'll add a link in the description, asking what you think is the chance of a fully autonomous, right, AI agent conducting a hit in the real world without sort of any, any human involvement, at least on the person kind of like originating the contract, not necessarily the person kind of like executing it. So meaning that if somebody like Pliny would task an agent to go out there and, you know, do something to better the world, right? Take out some person that this large language model would deem to be, you know, evil for the world or, or whatever, or maybe give it a specific target. What are the cases? What are the chances that in 2025, that this year, we might see something like that? I have to think a little bit about the question, how to phrase it exactly so it makes sense, but uh, check it out, put in your vote, very curious to know what people think. But you can kind of see where this is going, right? If we have AI agents that are able to autonomously go out there, do long horizon tasks, do planning, etc. We have various cryptocurrencies that can be exchanged globally that are either somewhat traceable or some of them completely untraceable. And we have places like the dark web, places that are specifically made so you can do various shady dealings sort of underground anonymously. I mean, you know, that's exactly how they caught the dread pirate Roberts. That literally was what led to his downfall. No, I'm not talking about Princess Bride. I'm talking about the Silk Road guy. Ross Ulbrich, aka Dread Pirate Roberts, sentenced to life in federal prison for creating and operating the Silk Road website on the dark web. So he created a website of where various illegal drugs were bought and sold, called it the Silk Road. You probably heard about it at some point. And he was operating it and uh, they didn't get him for that. Not initially, they couldn't catch him. I apologize if I'm getting some details wrong. It's been a while since I kind of read up on this, but if I recall correctly, they, they could not figure out who he was. He was able to operate uh, completely discreetly. Right, so Ulbrich operated Silk Road on what is known as the Onion Router or Tor Network. Right, so that would be able to conceal the IP addresses. Basically, you'd be able to do whatever you want in, in secrecy, or, or so, so the story goes. And the Silk Road included a Bitcoin-based payment system that served to facilitate the illegal commerce conducted on the site. So you would be able to allegedly go on the site and order up whatever your heart desired. Pay with Bitcoin and you'd be out. Ross, using the online moniker Dread Pirate Roberts, would oversee the entire operation and generated more than 13 million in uh, various commissions for the sales generated through the site. Ulbrich also demonstrated a willingness to use violence to protect his vast criminal online digital enterprise and the anonymity of its users, soliciting six murders for hire in connection with operating the site. So I don't really remember all the details, but it does sound like he had five or six people attempted to have them, you know, be killed. And there was evidence at the trial that Ulbrich ordered a hit on Curtis Green, a former Silk Road administrator, for $80,000. So at which point might we see something like that play out again, but this time with a swarm of AI agents managing the various tasks or trying to carry out assassinations or maybe even running a business of that scale of that, you know, doing some of the same stuff that the, the online Dread Pirate Roberts was doing. Do you think there's a chance that we'll see something like that in the next few years? Or do you think it's uh, inconceivable? Let me know in the comments. My name is Wes Roth. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.